and uh, she was 10 years old. Now these are both lowland tapirs, also known as Brazilian tapirs. Uh, they come from South and Central America, and they're actually the second smallest of all the four species of tapirs. So there are four different types of tapirs in the world, three from South and Central America, and one from Asia. Uh, so these guys here are uh, the second smallest. Emily? Sorry, will you just throw that in for me? Sorry, Emily's just teasing them over that way and uh, making my form look embarrassing. I take them away from the food. Uh, so, uh, so these, this is their first meal of the day. So naturally, they need a lot more branches, bark, and leaf lifting. So that's actually what we're just about to put in for them over here. So they will actually favour the branches uh, over some of the uh, vegetables. Now, the reason why this is, is because we do have to be careful with the amount of sugar that we feed them. So we don't give them as much uh, fruit or uh, sugar as much as possible so they do find their feet quite boring occasionally so uh, even though the baby corn the um, runner beans and bits like that looks tasty but to them they'll see hopefully find something better to eat first of all when the branch in here or willow is what is going to be more tastier so so these are lowland tapirs so they they also known as lowlands because they're not just found in brazil but that's what like i say they are also known as the brazilian tapir now there are a few differences with the brazilian tapir compared to your other three species uh, coloration is one now the malayan tapir the largest species of tapir they're black and white in markings whereas you can see these guys are one solid color really apart from their chin and you also have the bird's tapir and you have the mountain tapir uh, let's say are oh, different colours as well. The mountain tape is more of a black colour uh, and the bear's tape is more of a, a, a grey brown sort of colour. Well, these are more of a blacky brown. Uh, so, also size wise, as, as I mentioned, these are the second smallest. The other species you can see have all variations of different sizes. Uh, but with the Brazilian tape you here, the lowland, uh, the main thing is actually one of the more noticeable things. Uh, it's actually that Mohican along the back of their neck there. Now this is called a mantle muscle. This isn't there for style. This isn't a stylish, fashionable Mohican. This is actually there for protection. No. So these guys, their main protocol would be a jaguar in the wild. And uh, sadly we don't have our jaguars here at the moment, but uh, hopefully when they, uh, once the enclosure is finished, they'll be back here. Uh, you'll get, if you come back, you'll get a chance to see them again. Uh, but jaguars weigh in around 60 to 80 kilos. So they're actually quite a small big cat, really. Uh, and uh, they'll still try to take down a fully grown healthy tapir. But even though they haven't got their big size on their side, like the lions or tigers have, uh, they have the most strongest jaw pressure out of all big cats. So the jaguars always attack their prey from the back of the neck. So this will either break the skull or the vertebrae in one bite. So if they're sort of bite down on the back of the tapir's neck here, they're just gonna get a mouth of a muscle. Uh, it's obviously gonna hurt the tapir, but not kill it. Uh, the tapir can then uh, try to get the, uh, knock the jaguar off their back. And so the ways they'll do this, is because as you can see, they've got this lovely big body shape, quite a thick, uh, thick shaped body. Uh, but even though they've got this size on their hands, so these guys weigh around 200 to 250 kilos, uh, so quite a, quite a chunk, uh, they can actually run up to speeds of up to 30 miles an hour. So they have actually got speed on their side as well. And now you might be able to see Tamara here, she's actually chewing through some of these branches and just chowing down, ripping the branches straight off. And also Tomoko here is just chewing up on some of this raw sweet potato with ease. So they actually have quite a strong jaw pressure as well. So they can give a nasty bite back to the Jaguar if they really wanted to. So they're actually really peak of evolution. They don't really have any natural predators. Uh, apart from the Jaguar, I'd say they'll take down other old or injured or young tapirs, but actually fully grown healthy tapirs like R2 here, they wouldn't actually really have any natural predators. So you think their numbers would be doing well in the wild. So you think they'll be successfully breeding, their be, uh, uh, numbers are very high. However, this isn't true. Uh, the tapirs are actually either vulnerable or endangered. So their numbers are decreasing year by year. Um, and this has a few different reasons. And sadly, it is all down to us humans. Uh, they are hunted for their meat and for their skin in some countries. Obviously, this actually is also illegal in countries as well, but it still happens. Uh, they have a very thick leathery skin. So yeah, some people will hunt them for that. Uh, and, and you're probably all aware of deforestation that's happening in the world. It's not just in South and Central America, it's also in Asia uh, and uh, other parts even in North America as well. Uh, so deforestation is massively happening and that's destroying their homes. These guys do live in the rainforest uh, and sadly they're losing their homes and their food source. And due to this uh, deforestation, they're obviously moving all these logs. Uh, so they're putting these big highways in and these big lorries traveling with heavy loads uh, traveling at high speeds down these highways so actually sadly road traffic accidents as well you wouldn't see, think of it seeing one of these tapirs but actually road traffic accidents is a big demise of tapirs as well in the modern day so i say sadly we are losing them from our planet which is a real shame because as you see them today they actually haven't changed much over the last 30 million years and they're actually the oldest fossil i'll take you dates back to 50 million years ago 
So has everybody here seen the film Ice Age? Anyone seen the film Ice Age? Put your hands up. Yeah? So in the film Ice Age, you might have seen, they don't look just as beautiful as this, but they still look quite cute. Uh, they have these little weird round animals with big noses. They are actually meant to be tapirs. Uh, so tapirs were found, they have found fossilised tapirs back from the Ice Age period. Uh, so they've been on our planet for a really long time. It would be a real shame if we were to lose them. And it wouldn't just be a shame just because we love tapirs and we'd want to uh, sadly lose these guys. It's actually going to be a major effect, not just to us, but actually all the other animals that live around South America. Because as you can see here, they're eating a large range of different vegetables and plant matter. So they are, they are known as a herbivore. So these guys would eat up to around about 30 kilos of plant matter in one day. So they all eat flowers, buds, seeds, and they actually pass these out in their feces. And you might be able to see over the back there, they've got this lovely good swimming pool that they can go in. You might, if you stay around a little bit later, they might go into that uh, after they've gone to a pool, if you uh, have gone to have their food. Or if you've been here earlier, you might have seen they are actually quite wet, so they've been in and out of this pool already today. But they'll go to the toilet in the water, and naturally in the wild, this would actually flush all their feces downstream and help actually spread the seeds further afield. So tapirs actually do have a nickname in South America as the gardeners of the rainforest because they are the largest seed dispensers in the South American rainforest. So it's a very interesting and cool fact. Now, a lot of people will pass this enclosure and not really know what too much about tapirs. Now, I've worked with these guys here for 15 years now at the park. Every single day we get people saying, oh, look at the, uh, look at the pig, look at the anteater. Uh, now, does anyone want to shout out what sort of animals they think they might be related to? Anyone have any guesses? Horses. Horses. Someone over the back there. Any other shouts? Hippos, rhinos. So we've actually had horses and rhinos quite first. Uh, so well done to you guys. Uh, normally we get a lot of thing, people thinking anteaters, uh, pigs, sometimes uh, little elephants as well because that little trunk. Uh, but yeah, their closest living relatives are horses and rhinos. Distant relatives, but still their closest. Um, and they uh, say, you can see a few similarities there. Their body shapes are a little bit like a rhino's body shape, just without all the armor and plating. Uh, that long head of theirs is a bit like a horse's head and where the shape of their ears. Uh, so there's a few similarities to them there. They're also their digestive system is very similar to a rhino's, uh, like the black rhino and bits like that as well. Now, as I say, sadly they are dying out, but how can we save these guys? Because uh, obviously we, I'm sure we all want to. Uh, now there are many different ways we can save them. And this is looking into uh, see global warming. So I'm sure everyone's heard of it a lot, uh, like the CO2 emissions, trying to reduce our carbon footprint. Uh, you guys might hear it on the news and might not think too much of it, but it is a big important factor. If we can reduce the carbon footprint, uh, it will massively help save the planet. Okay, it will help the forest fish. fires uh, stop happening, because even in some areas you might have heard in the news, uh, in 2020, uh, there was large forest fires that decimated the Amazon rainforest. Obviously this was due to humans, but because of the temperature and how dry it was, it was one of the driest years they had, uh, it encouraged that fire to carry on moving. And you'll see the same in Australia a few years ago, we have it a lot in North America, and this is down to our CO2 emissions. So hopefully if we can try to reduce our CO2 emissions, that massively will help save the animals. Because they live in the Amazon rainforest, the Amazon rainforest is known as the lungs of the world, it's the largest uh, rainforest in the world, it absorbs the most CO2. But it can only absorb so much CO2, and if we keep plummeting more and more in, uh, sadly uh, they will over, they'll overrun us. Also, when you buy wood or paper materials, look for a special logo. There's a special logo, the like FSC logo. I think we've got a picture of it up on the sign upstairs. Uh, but you might have all seen this logo now, or even down to your toilet paper. And this means it's specially sourced wood, uh, uh, from specially sourced wood. So any of your paper uh, or wooden furniture, make sure it's got that logo on it. It shows that it's not legally um, chopped down wood from the rainforest or unsustainable wood as well. So that's a really important factor and can help these guys in the wild. But also, you've already helped them. There's all of what we can do. But to be honest, you've actually already helped them just by visiting us today. Uh, now, we are a member of Biaza. Uh, people, some people might know what Biaza is. Biaza is associate, British and Irish Association of Zoos and Aquariums. There's over 100 different Biaza collections around the UK. And uh, these actually support lots of different wildlife conservations. And the Lowland Tapir Conservation is actually a project that we support here at the park. This year we've actually just donated £2,500 already to them. And hopefully we'll be able to top that up as the years goes on. But uh, this is a project that lots of different collections around the world, uh, around the UK, will actually support. So just by visiting these collections uh, is a really important part and can actually help save these animals. But also this week, I know it's come to the end of the week, but this week is actually Love Your Zoo Week. And it's an event that Biaza run. 
Uh, so this is trying to get people to love their local zoos, and especially their Biaza zoos, uh, because Biaza is a really important association. They, I say, uh, they have un over 100 different collections in the UK. They have over 35 million visitors come through their doors throughout the year. They raise over 31 ma uh, million pounds a year uh, to all different wildlife conservation projects. The amount of they they fund thousands and thousands of hours of research to try to help us find out more about these animals. So it's a really important part to try to attend these Biasa collections. Now, also because of the Zoo Week, they are actually they are supporting uh, diversity this year. Uh, this year, so diversity and looking at the LGBTQ plus. Uh, 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 groups, but uh, and this actually does so, uh, happen in uh, some animals as well. So uh, it's not just down to the diversity in our staff that uh, we hire across the uh, across the UK, but actually some of our animals that we have in our collections as well. You might have heard the stories of uh, penguins, uh, male penguins actually pairing up together and mating. So you do actually get that diversity in the animal kingdom. But I hope you guys enjoyed that. If anyone has any more questions, please feel free to ask me around a little bit longer. If anyone loves tapirs that much, uh, we do actually do an event here called Tickler Tapir. There is a sign on the, I think just there. Uh, there is a sign that says about it, but a Tickler Tapir is where you can get the chance to come in and meet the tapirs, spend half an hour with one of us keepers. And when we say Tickler Tapir, we really do mean Tickler Tapir. They do enjoy it. They roll over onto their backs, enjoy their bellies being scratched, allows people to get up close and personal with them. Uh, also allows us to get up close and give them health checks, so we can check them over and make sure they're nice and healthy. Uh, but it's a really great way. Um, if anyone has any more questions on that, please feel free to ask. If not, have a look on our website, uh, and that, you'll be able to go onto the experience page and uh, show you, and that'll take you to the information page there. And also, if you just love our tapies, we do actually do adoptions of our tapies as well. So if you love them so much, with Tamara throwing its branch around, you think, I'd really like to adopt her. Uh, you can actually adopt our tapirs. Uh, you get your name up on the plaque by the, uh, by the stairs there. A uh, little goodie pack as well. So it's a great birthday or Christmas presents if anyone needs to. But thank you very much for listening, guys. Have a lovely day. My name's been James, uh, and hope you enjoyed our tapirs. Uh, the next talk of the day is our 3.30 penguin talk. So that's just at our penguin falls enclosure, which is just on the other side of this outback trail. So if you have to go through that or go around it. And I say that'll be at 3.30. And then at 4 o'clock, we have our tiger talk down at the containers at the bottom. So thank you very much. Have a lovely day and bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.